Samurai 7 is a sci-fi anime adaptation by Studio Gonzo, based on the original Seven Samurai by Akira Kurosawa. A fair warning going into this review, I will be spoiling it as well as the original Seven Samurai. I usually abstain from spoilers, however, I feel that otherwise I cannot accurately describe my distaste with this anime series unless I do. So you've been warned. The art and animation in Samurai 7 is kind of mixed. For the most part, visually, this is not a bad looking anime. It's not great looking either, but it's not really bad. The CGI, I feel, takes away from the animation, however, and I think they would have worked out better if they were drawn traditionally instead, as they tend to look out of place. However, in true Gonzo style, while again the show looks alright for the most part, there are a few episodes here and there which are, oh my fucking god, this looks horrible! I've only seen two Studio Gonzo animes, this and Welcome to the NHK, and they do this in both. Is this their calling card or something? And they do this for entire episodes. I mean, how lazy can you get? Now, I have to admit that the music is really well done in this show. I was actually surprised at just how well the music was composed in the series, and how well it fit with the scenes that they were used to. The English dub of this anime was decent, pretty much the quality you would expect from Funimation. I haven't really listened to the Japanese dub, so I can't comment, but I'm sure it's fine. Now typically I talk about action sequences last, but I have so much to go over in terms of the plot, I'm just going to get this out of the way first. The fight scenes in Samurai 7 are fairly adequate. It's a bit predictable though. There are some cool fight scenes here and there, but nothing that really stands out. The opening has probably the most interesting fighting throughout the entire show though, honestly. In the end though, the fight sequences are one of the higher points of the show, but it's not really anything special either. And last thing about the fight sequences. Even though the fights escalated more in the second half of the show, I felt they weren't as polished as they were in the first half, i.e. reusing footage. And I think that's due to the second half of the show deterring itself from the movie. Now, it's time to get into what really makes this series a disgrace, at least in my eyes. I know some people really like this show, and I don't think there's anything wrong with liking it, but I will still point out my issues with it, and I will justify them to the best of my abilities, and I hope that in the end you'll understand where I'm coming from. This series is an adaptation of the original Seven Samurai. Comparisons are almost inevitable. The series in the film is about seven samurai who are hired by villagers to defend their village from bandits who have been terrorizing them and stealing their crops. It is a simple story with many layers of depth from the relationship between the farmers and the samurai as well as knowing one's place in society. Turning Seven Samurai into an anime series in and of itself is not a bad idea. However, I'm not really sure what was the point of turning it into a science fiction steampunk kind of setting. I really felt that this added very little. There were some interesting ideas put forth from time to time, such as making the bandits ride in hulking mechs. This was to symbolize their oppression over the villagers. But making the mechs CGI actually takes away from their presence, and if anything just makes them look goofy. However, I think the biggest issue with this series is the simple fact that it really overstays its welcome for far too long. Instead of ending the story where the film did, where they should have ended it, the writers decided to instead extend it to not just fighting the bandits, but something about overthrowing the government, which is just stupid. I'm going to be honest. If Samurai 7 ended where the film did, the series wouldn't have been all that good, but it would have at least been somewhat decent. Not a resounding recommendation, but not absolutely terrible either. However, making the show drag on in the second half just really kills it. For starters, the romance aspect is completely changed and ends up being extremely creepy. It also misses the entire point of the failed romance of the original film. Shino from Seven Samurai did not end up with Katsushiro because they could not bridge the gap between the classes. The failed romance between Kirara and Kambe is more just Kambe's an old fucking man. The romance subplot should just not have been there at all because one, it serves no purpose and two, it just misses the point of the original. Oh yeah, speaking of... Ugh romantic subplots that shouldn't be there. Now, I know that Kikuchio's character was good with kids in the original, but why in the fuck is the little girl that runs around with them in the group in love with him? Not only is it creepy since she's only like seven or eight, that alone would have made it bad. But no, in this series, Kikuchio's character is a 
fucking cyborg. And not the deus ex kind of cyborg, where they have a cybernetic limb. No, no, he's more machine than that now. So I think it's even worse. However, getting off that for a second, since I really don't need to elaborate on how fucked up that is, I think turning him into a cyborg was actually a good idea, and makes good use of the cyberpunk setting. In the original film, Kikuchio wielded a giant blade meant for attacking on horseback. Since his character was originally a farmer, he did not understand the sword's actual use. Use. He simply wanted something to display his own power and to make himself seem like a greater warrior than what he actually was. Similarly, in the anime, Kukuchio turns himself into a cyborg in order to gain power. However, what's a wasted opportunity in my eyes is the dilemma between wanting power and losing one's humanity. This is only very lightly touched on in the show, which is really a shame, as this could have been served to develop his character in interesting ways. As it stands now, his character in the show is mostly a disgrace to Toshiro Mifune's excellent performance in the original film. Yes, his character was supposed to bring some comic relief from time to time, but he was not the buffoon as portrayed in this anime. In fact, a lot of the characters in the anime felt like they were either over-exaggerated or watered-down versions of their film counterparts. Kanbei was okay, but he did not display the same level of wisdom as he did in the film. Gorobei was just fucking weird in the way he acted. He got this really disturbing sense of euphoria from battle and near-death experiences. Katsushiro was a very stereotypical shonen character. Shishiroji actually made no impact at all, when in film he acted like a very reliable second lieutenant to Kanbei. Haihaichi was actually, you know, a pretty cool character, surprisingly. And Kyuzo was pretty much how he was in the original film, except they exaggerated his fighting abilities. Now speaking of exaggeration, I understand it's an anime. They wanted to put things on a grander scale, because when you put something in animation, that allows you to do things that you wouldn't normally be able to do in a live action. But the fact that the original film was so down to earth and on such a small scale was one of the great things about the film and is something that this series completely misses. The village is their world. They live and they die there. And bandits taking over for the villagers is like the end of the world. That's why the second half of the series is especially a disgrace because it tries to take it further and it's completely retarded because it's missing the point. Another thing that would have made this series better is it honestly if it just didn't have anything to do with the original film. I mean, it feels like they watched the movie, they remembered the basics of the plot, some of the characters' names, and decided to make an anime just based on that without understanding the source material. It's like when you try making a comic book movie and you get a director who doesn't know anything about comics. They know the names of the characters, they know the basic plot, but they don't understand the soul. And to me, that's what this series is. It has no soul. I really could. Just, just go on about how much of a fucking disgrace this show is. I could keep comparing it to the film. But honestly, what I just said right there is the crux of why this show fails. It's missing the point and it has no soul. Saying Samurai 7 is a disappointing anime is an understatement to a gross degree. Filling in the shoes of such a classic film in and of itself is a daunting task. But to fail so epically in so many regards just magnifies this point. Well guys. This has been Shintai, raging in the anime room. See you next time, folks.